bit of an update for what's going on here in Canada. Something I was talking about uh, a little while back about Trudeau uh, opening up the mass immigration to half a million a year, 500,000. Last year we brought in about 300,000 up from our quarter million a year of 250,000. But it looks like they're not going to be able to do the full uh, 500,000 uh, because they don't have enough immigration officers to process all those people, uh, which I do see a lot of problems coming out of this. Uh, so they're going to only up it to 300,000. But according to John McClellan, they're going to increase this every year. <coughs> every, you know, every year it's going to increase by more and more and more. So there's a couple of questions that people have to ask. Uh, you know, wherever your biases lie on this, this issue, for me, it, it is an issue. Uh, immigration, I think, is a huge issue uh, because of where it leads to in the long run. Now, if you're just one of those uh, multiculturalists, stuff like that, there's really not, you're not going to get much out of this video. But if you're, some per if you're a person that worry about demographics of Canada, uh, job opportunities, and stuff like that. Well, what does it mean for you? And straight on the, the, the system, that type of thing like health care, retirement, et cetera, et cetera. Well, here's what it's going to mean. Um, basically, they're going to increase uh, economic workers by 7%. Now, that sounds good, but the problem is you have to factor in what does economic worker mean. It means that 7% of the people coming in are going to be coming in for job skills. What jobs are these? Well, these are jobs that uh, they're talking about some high-tech people coming in, which has a lot of problems there. Every, uh, keep it simple. When you take a doctor out of the third world and bring them here, it might be a win for us, but those third world countries don't have a lot of doctors to begin with. So even though we're a bit short on the doctors here, we can manage, but when you pull them out of there, guess what? That, you know, that, you know they, they, they have nothing now. So you, you create a brain drain there. This is a typical liberal thing. They've done this with every immigration system they've ever had. Uh, the next one is, now there is an extra person competing for the job you want. Uh, I do believe what they're going to do is temporary foreign labor uh, quite a bit uh, because I think the policy is still the same where they can pay uh, foreigners 15% less, which I don't agree with at all, to undercut the labor here, which means you're going to have more job scarce, uh, rar uh, rarity, job scarcity, so, uh, so to speak, competing with more people who can outbid you, so to speak, uh, just by the fact that they... they the employers are able to undercut their labor. So that said, <coughs> and even if you wanted to say, okay, well, I'll take the less pay so I can get the job. By law, they can't do it. Why? Because as a Canadian citizen, in areas where there's minimum wage, they have to, by law, pay, pay you minimum wage. So you can't get the job even if you were willing to go the other way. So <laughs> that type of thing. So it's a lose-lose situation. Do we need the, these immigrants? My theory is no. I mean, we don't have a growing enough economy for this. Uh, to bring in the people at the rate we're bringing them in is too fast. I do believe we're going to have a culture clash eight to ten years out, like we're seeing in Europe now. Uh, a little bit after that, it's going to get pretty rough. The problem is, is you can't just grab people from all over the world, throw them into one spot, and expect them just to integrate. It takes a couple of generations to do this. We used to have tap-on, tap-off immigration system. About 40 years ago under Trudeau, they basically, uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, they went with this idea that Canada has no identity, uh, it's just a multicultural thing, uh, there's no, you know, what is a Canadian, I mean, for some reason these guys couldn't look at the uh, coat of arms to figure out what our heritage and lineage was, but uh, I digress from there. Uh, so what they're saying is that Canada doesn't have an identity, anybody that steps foot here is a Canadian. Uh, Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian, which is the way their, their approach to it, whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's up to you. I don't necessarily agree with that. I do believe this country has a whole lot of heritage. Uh, and the identity, I think, is pretty, you know, we're a British colony, a French, uh, French colony, uh, natives, you know. <laughs> Basically, the shield of arms, you got British, Scottish, Irish, French, and natives. That's the main core of the value system that turned Canada into what it is. Uh, and then it got rearranged about 40 years ago. So we were doing good up until that point, and we had tap on, tap off immigration. If we needed people, we brought them in. We didn't need them, we, we shut it off. So you bring in people for about a decade, and then you let a generation or two to integrate. Usually by the third generation, you have a full integration in, into the society, but we're not doing that now. Now it's just flood them in beyond saturation levels, which doesn't allow people to uh, basically integrate. What ends up happening is you get ghettos, you get uh, these little subcultures everywhere that start making demands. We're seeing it already. Uh, I don't want to divert to too many different topics, uh, but we're seeing it already in Canada. We see it more in Europe than we do in Canada, and we're doing exactly all the crazy stuff they're doing. 
So economically, it doesn't make sense to bring in any more people. We really do need to cut the immigration off in Canada for a couple of de a generation at least. Uh, we've got enough people here. Yes, Canada is a large landmass. We don't have the infrastructure. Every immigrant you bring in, you have to understand that uh, the lawyers and, and uh, you know, this, is, this started with John Kretschmer. All these uh, immigration firms, every time they get a, Canadi a, Cana uh, a Canadian citizen, they get a bonus of $50,000 for this, is what I heard. So, again, which that money, where does it come from? It comes from the taxpayer. That could be going to your health care, your retirement, all that stuff. Now, when they make the argument that, oh, no, well, we have to bring in all these immigrants because we have an aging population and a shrinking def demographic, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, what they don't tell you is that the, the people that are coming in, because they're going to be underemployed, uh, by paying them less for most of the time, and many of these people are not going to work anyway. Uh, they're going to be on welfare, they're going to be on that. So they're going to strain the system even more. They're going to strain the healthcare system, they're going to strain the, the job market, strain, strain, strain. And it creates, you have to understand, the liberal, uh, conservatives love cheap labor, liberals love uh, welfare states. So the best way is to create a whole bunch of poverty. The best way to do that is undercut the labor. And to say, well, yeah, but Canadians won't do those uh, low-paying jobs and stuff like that. It's because the wages are too low. Now, how do you drive wages up? Well, don't give them the option to hire somebody to undercut the labor. You're just creating a, uh, a poverty class. That's it. So get people to raise their wages so people will stay employed. Again, if you have a waitress and you're paying her uh, $12,000 a year, chances are she's going to go to school, struggle through that, and once she gets more skills, she's going to move on to something else. If you're paying her $20,000 a year, she might stay there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, sure, you'll have to up the price of your product, sure, and you say, well, yeah, but then you can't compete with anybody. But that's not true. That's not true at all because it's the same thing. If one company starts paying a little more, people flock to that company and people have to compete for it. You let the, the market balance itself. This idea that, okay, well, yes, but the fast food restaurants don't have enough uh, employees, so we have to import labor. No, you don't have to do that at all. What you need to do is say, okay, well, perhaps you want to raise your wages a bit. Maybe, yes, you'll have to increase the cost of your product, but people will get paid. You pay them well, they'll stay. And a lot of people don't see that way, but you have to understand it will work out the same way because the people who pay better will get the employees. You get the employees, you get production. You get production, you sell things. Sure, they'll be undercut for a little bit, but after a while, when the other company, and I've seen companies, on, and I've, I've worked for construction guys that are like this all the time, undercut the other guys to get the contract, then they always go over budget, and they always never get a, the contract again because the guy who charged the right price a little bit more, paid his guys a little bit better, maybe not by much, but a little bit better, usually does better because... You know, he doesn't want to undercut himself. So this idea that, well, we have to keep the prices so low, uh, <laughs> you know, at some point, you know, it, it, it does backfire. Because we're seeing that now where it's just you got all these people out there that work in these service sector economy that we have in Canada, which uh, the job numbers coming out from the liberals right now is horrible. Tens of thousands of jobs. They haven't created one single full-time job in almost eight months out of billions and billions. Of, one month, I think they spent something like $9 billion on what? I have no idea. Um, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to have all these people that are underemployed uh, who work at places these in the service sector where they can't afford to shop or eat. So they work there, but their wages are so low they can't afford to do it. Which, what happens to those people? Well, simple. They work until the restaurant closes or the fast food chain closes because nobody goes there because nobody makes enough to go there. <laughs> you know, where if you pay them a little more, sure you charge a little bit more for your product, but now you have people that will bring their families in. You know, okay, well, whatever, I work hard this week, I'll go to that restaurant, I'll go to this restaurant, I'll go there. I'll go. The rising tide floats all boats. I know there are some people who think it's always about the bottom line and stuff, but it doesn't really work like that. If people have money in their pocket, they spend it. Uh, so that's one big thing about the uh, undercutting labor. The policies are still there. Uh, we've seen uh, the uh, temporary foreign workers program taken advantage of, where out west you saw, like, you know, these restaurant owners uh, hiring people from their home country and just hiring those people that type of thing, uh, because those people, they could pay 15% less, which is not even fair to the people coming in, because these people paid a lot of money to come to the country uh, to make a better life for themselves, and now we're, we're squeezing them. I think once you're employed in Canada, if there's a minimum wage, it should hold true to everybody. In fact, I think temporary foreign workers should be paid 15% more if you have to get them. That way, you know that they will pick from the indigenous pool job uh, people before they worry about that. The other problem is the health care and, and the retirement. Uh, so you've got a lot of people, for example, Justin Trudeau, uh, bringing in a lot. There's going to, anybody over the age of 50 is not going to have to learn French or English. 
So what do these people do when they get there? Just sit on welfare for the rest of their life until they can dr- uh, draw pension? Uh, so now we don't have enough hospital beds for uh, seniors already, and retirement, again, is, is nothing. It's pennies for seniors. But we're going to spend how many millions of dollars? <laughs> you know, For somebody to come to Canada and sit on welfare, I think it's complete lunacy. I think what should happen is if you're in Canada for two years and you have not found a job, uh, make it easy for people to work, sure, granted like that, but make it fair. But if they haven't found a job and they're on the welfare system, Here's your plane ticket. Go back home. We don't need you. Thanks for coming. And no, you can't come back again. Maybe visit, sure, but we don't want you here. Uh, contribute to the economy or we don't need you. So if we need them, bring them in. If we don't need them, don't bring them in. That simple. Right now, we don't need anybody. The economy is not thriving. It is absolutely the opposite of what the Liberals are saying. And you, Again, go to Statistics Canada. They're, they're telling you everything you need to know about the Liberal government. Uh, and, of course, they've got the pay-to-play thing going on up here uh, and all the partisanship and all that. And it's just, just a nightmare. Uh, what's going on. Like I said, it would be under Justin Trudeau. Uh, I said within eight months you would see the, the crack up of the country, and you're seeing it. Uh, it's not as bad as other countries, but in the third year, people are going to realize how bad the Trudeau government actually is. Their policies, uh, for all the money they're going to ramp up in four years uh, in deficits, it's like the bankers are going to make money, the politicians are making money, the big corporations are going to make money. Justin Trudeau, where is he sending the jobs? As he's impl- uh, Well, he's sending them to Buffalo, to New York, to uh, Philippines, to uh, uh, other, a few other countries, to China. That's where the jobs are going. I mean, just look at uh, CETA. He signed CETA. Well, if you're a farmer in Canada, just guess what? <laughs> you're going to be closing your doors within three years probably under the, you know, uh, because you're not going to be able to compete with all the cheap stuff coming in from other countries. Uh, we've seen the, the Ontario Liberals do this for decades. Uh, look, uh, something like uh, six out of every ten apples or something, you'll have to go look at the statistic, that come into Ontario are from somewhere else, like Mexico or, you know, whatever. Uh, here's the deal. And when you have, like, how many apple orchards in, in Ontario? You know what I mean? <laughs> that type of thing. Uh, the tomatoes, uh, everything like that. Yeah, so... Uh, the Liberals, trust me, they don't want people farm. They don't want industry in Canada. Uh, we've already lost 20,000 manufacturing jobs, not to mention the stuff going on in uh, Alberta under the Liberals. They're not, they're, they are not a remedy for the situation. And on top of that, they're going to bring in 300,000 people a year. So every three years is nearly a million people. Every four years is 1.2 million people coming in. Uh, now, with the immigration ministers, and they always get immigration ministers that are not Canadian-born. They get people that were immigrants and turn them into immigration ministers. Why? Because they always want more immigration. And remember, they get a bonus for, for landing an immigrant, right? They're taking a landing immigrant turning them into a citizen. So 300,000 people a year that they can't process now. That's why they're not at uh, a half million a year. 300,000 people they can't process now. This is coming right from uh, the immigration minister himself, uh, John McClellan, which <laughs> I can't stand the guy, but... Uh, here's the thing, here's the deal. They can't process those people now. They couldn't even process those 25,000 refugees. So, and they're going to triple it next year and the year. This is exactly what they've said they're going to do. Triple, quadruple. So as soon as they can bring in a million people a year, they will. But they can't process them. There's no way to do it. So what are they going to do? They're going to make a fast track system. Uh, they haven't really announced that yet, but they're hinting at it. So basically, the standards, their high standards that they're set, they're going to, that high standards isn't going to be so high anymore. So it means... You'll become a citizen quicker and easier, but the vetting is not going to be there. Uh, It's going to be a disaster like you wouldn't. We'll survive it for four years. After eight years, maybe you might want to start looking for a new country. Um, It's something that, uh, you know, I'm coming to the realization of you can't, you can fix a broken system, but you can't fix a corrupt system easily. So you have to know when to jump ship uh, and get out of the way. Where do you go? I don't know. I don't know. But... Within four years, I mean, at the end of, if Trudeau gets in a second time, there is no more Canada. Uh, it, it is completely in line with the globalization in the United Nations. Every law coming into Canada now is pretty much UN mandate. Uh, you could, that's all they're talking about in Parliament is a progressive immigration system. So in other words, no borders, North American Union, uh, Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership will be signed at some point under Trudeau. No, it will not be transparent. CETA got signed. They're just, you know, it, it, it's, it's a done deal pretty much there now which will kill jobs in Canada and stuff like that. Uh, and when people make the argument, well, immigrants don't steal your job, they're a benefit, but they're, they're not. The, the, the economy's shrinking. Uh, you know, it grew a little bit, and it, there's more downs than ups. So it'll grow a little bit and then go down. Where we were on a steady incline, at least under the conservatives, the immigration system was, again, the main two complaints I had about the uh, conservative immigration system was one quarter million people per year was way too much. Bring them in if you need them. If you don't need them, don't do it. 
The second was the undercutting of the labor. The third was anchor babies. And anchor babies now, <laughs> trust me, anchor baby tourism under the liberals is going to skyrocket like it always has. Uh, so that's what's going on. So 67% um, of people polled from the CBC, remember this leftist organization pro multiculturalism, we might as well say multiracial. They don't really believe in multiculturalism. We already have multiculturalism in, in Canada. Uh, we had it, you know, Scottish, Irish, French, natives. We had lots of multiculturalism in Canada. But what they're really talking is multiracial. Uh, the other thing John McClellan talked about was how it's going to help our demographics. Now, he's probably talking about two things. A, the birth rates in Canada overall are like 1.3 to 1.6, which is not too bad. And if you're taking it from an environmentalist point of view, this is where these people drive me nuts is they're so inconsistent. They talk about sustainable development, which is Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and a lower carbon footprint and stuff like that, human beings lowering their footprint. But then they want more people coming in. <laughs> That's unsustainable. It makes no sense. But they're following a progressive religious ideology, which is exactly what it is. It is a religious ideology. So you have to look at it like that. So that's what's going on right now. Will we survive it for four years? I think so. But 67% of Canadians do not want more uh, unvetted uh, mass immigration. Uh, if they were to ever put it up to a vote, I think most nations will vote the same way worldwide. You can call me racist, bigot, xenophobe, homophobe, this phobe, that phobe, whatever. But most nations will not vote for open-door immigration. Uh, and this is exactly, again, what is a 50-year-old coming into Canada who doesn't have to learn French or English, what are they going to contribute to our society? Nothing. And these people are probably going to be less healthy. Why? They're, they're a lot older. They're coming from bad parts of the world or maybe not as good of parts of the world. Maybe, say, sec first, uh, like, uh, you know, second world, maybe third world nations. So what does that leave you with? People that are going to strain the medical system. You know, plus they're closer to retirement. So that, you know, and this idea, well, yeah, but we need the younger population to pay for the retirement of the older population. That's kind of BS. It's BS for a lot of reasons. Because if you balance the Canadian budget, you can take care of your retirees. Uh, if you cut the foreign aid spending, like right now we're spending money for francophone, uh, you know, in, in like something like, I forget how many African countries right now, like it's five or six African countries, where we're promoting uh, francophony in, in there. Why do we send that money out of the country? Like exactly what interest is it for us to be over there? You know, uh, for that, like when that could be paid for your retirement, for your hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. So it's mismanagement of the... The, the, the economy, mismanagement of the uh, budget. That's why we can't pay for our retirees and our health care. It's not because it's not we don't pay enough taxes. We pay way too much taxes. So on top of failing jobs, mass immigration, which means you'll have to compete against more people to get a job for lower paying jobs. Um, on top of that, you've got another problem of a shrinking economy, all that. Like, it, it just, Trudeau's doing pretty much the job I said he was going to do. And, you know, they're anti-anything of benefit. They really don't, they, again, the, tr the Trudeau government needs to make government bigger, not smaller. They need more struggling families. These people need the underclass. They need the poor. They need that. Because that's, that's their whole mandate, is to have an underclass. That's how they get their funding. But they never, it never really trickles down to the people. And they never really ask anybody, you know, like, nobody ever asked me if I want uh, mass immigration in my country. You know what I mean? Like, they don't ask me that. Um... And the idea that our country belongs to everybody because, I don't, I don't, it's just, you know, again, at some point people are going to have to start asking themselves these tough questions. And with all these minority, uh, like Bill C-25, where gender parity and minority, it's basically work equity, what they call affirmative action in the States. We've got what they call work equity up here. Uh, basically, minorities are going to get the, the jump on almost every job because that's the new policies that are being signed into law now. So, yeah, in four years... The country is not going to look the same, just like I said on day one. So it's, what, eight, almost eight, nine months since he's been elected? And really, he's a puppet. I know that. Uh, I think the bigger people behind, like John McCollum, seems to be running the show a little bit more than Trudeau. Uh, Kretz, he's got his head sticking up everywhere. And th that, that group is the ones running everything. Um, not Trudeau. Trudeau is just a, you know, he's like a, he's a, he's a white Obama. He's a, like, the guy's won the election, he's out there campaigning. You've already won the election. So why are you out there campaigning? Get to work. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So these are more Trudeau policies coming in. Uh, yeah, you can yell at him, but it's the people behind, you know, and again, John McClellan talking about his good friend George Soros uh, right there. So we know exactly what's going on. Mass immigration to, to basically rip the sovereignty. Again, sending all our jobs over there somewhere. 
Uh, NAFTA on steroids can't happen fast enough with the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership or CETA. Now, the Conservatives were bad on that deal too, but at least they were able to balance a budget and it was survivable. Uh, however, at this point, if you voted Liberal, yes, it is going to hurt you. No, your union will not be able to keep you working because you've got job security. There is no such thing as job security. When, there are people in the government right now, perhaps you heard about the pay system that's going on a couple of months now, and people think it's a glitch in the system. Uh, no, I'm going to tell you what's happening, what's really happening. Uh, this glitch in the system where government employees right now in Canada are not being paid. We're talking tens of thousands of people not being paid uh, for months. Um, the, the, the pay, that pay, new pay system that's going wrong is probably what they're doing is stalling paying these people. Make sure that, it, call, call it a glitch because we can't pay these people. Why? We're broke. <laughs> we're broke. Meanwhile, you know, we're broke for things that don't pertain to the Liberals, right? So... It's a furlough, is what it is. It, 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 is it a glitch? It could be. It could be. But the timing, I don't think so. When you don't pay tens of thousands of, of your government employees, um, we'll end up like uh, Soviet Russia. They pretended to work, the system pretended to pay them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're going to end up with that. And we see with this gender parity thing going on, and everything is about LGBTQ. And that's only, like, there's bigger fish to fry. You've got people out of work. You've got an ailing economy, and you've got, oh, well, we've got to talk about uh, hope and change and all uh, that kind of stuff, you know. It's just so ridiculous. But I think people will see through it. But if you vote a Trudeau, well, like I say, careful what you wish for, you get, you know, because <laughs> you'll get it. And, yeah, it, it's, i got to go check my potatoes, but we're on a barbecue. But you're getting the idea that, yeah, these, these people, they can't count. They never could. And... Hey, we'll shut the oh, little dog. Shut the barbecue off. Don't want to burn my potatoes. Shut up my barbecue. I know it's November, but I ain't giving up on the barbecue. I ain't ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. You're gonna have five feet of snow on this sucker. I ain't giving up on it. There's enough propane. I can I can burn it off. Thunderstorm? <laughs> November first? What? It's that hot and cold air, eh? But anyway, so that's what's going on. So just to recap, uh, John McCollum out there uh, bringing 300,000 people. Yes, they're going to increase it next year. As soon as they can get their half million, they will move on to a million, whatever it is, per year. From where? Well, again, when he talks about uh, demographics, he's talking about multiculturalism or multiracialism, is, I think is a better term. Uh, basically, anybody that doesn't come from Europe, pretty much. If you look at where Pierre Elliott Trudeau set the quotas, the immigration quotas, uh, they will be basically all non-white countries, all non-European countries for the most part. Uh, that's where they set those 40 years ago. They set that 40 years ago. Um, so it's to change the demographics in Canada, clearly. The next thing is 7% uh, are going to be economic migrants, so that's going to hurt other countries if we take away their, their skilled labor and whatever. But also that means if we bring in a doctor or an engineer uh, from, an, you know, from Zimbabwe or someplace like that, you're, you're hurting that country. Uh, we're also going to be doing something else. We're, we're going to undercut the labor here. So these students that are got thousands and thousands of dollars in debt in in uh, uh, school fee, uh, in, you know, in loan school loans, uh, now we're going to have to compete with somebody who's going to get paid 15% less than them coming into the country. Not very nice, now is it? So I mean, for some people, again, you want to call me racist, bigot on it, fine. But again, the people don't care until it hits them in the pocket. I get that. And after four years of this going on, remember, in four years, I mean, like the CBC right now, you can't, hire, you can't get hired as a white guy at the CBC. That, that's impossible. Uh, they pretty much say right in their hiring practice, uh, women and minorities, uh, welcome, uh, you know, uh, white males not, need not apply. I mean, you can't put it any more plain. You can't even make that up. So, and with Bill C-25, which is now going to have, every firm or business is going to have to explain why they're not hiring 50-50 gender parity type of thing. Um, so really, it's an anti, I mean, you have to call it what it is. It's anti-white, it's anti-white male. It's, it's the progressive agenda that they're talking about. Now somebody, oh no, you're, you're stretching. Just go listen to them. I mean, when I, when I have a guy in Parliament saying that we're going to make it law, and I'm pretty sure that it was on the second reading, so one more reading, and then it goes, uh, goes up for vote uh, to have this gender parity where it has to be, you know, because we don't have enough women CEOs, so it's only important that they're female or a minority. It's not important whether they're qualified or not. And I'm already seeing some of the Trudeau employees um, uh, 
right now there's one under scrutiny of, uh, from the Senate. Again, these, these people don't have a party affiliation, but trust me, they're as crazy progressive leftists as Trudeau could pick them. Uh, but we have that one lady, I can't remember her name there, I was just listening to her. Again, about, and I'm not saying because she's a woman she's not qualified, and I'm saying because she's a minority she's not qualified. But what I'm saying is they put this poor woman, you could see it in her face, uh, they put her in a position she's clearly not ready to handle um, for the political correctness. So she's out there in Parliament, and, you know, basically the only thing she can do is go back to the company line. Uh, whenever asks a tough question. And you can see it in her face that she's just like in over her head. Like you can just see uh, she's young, she doesn't have much experience. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not against giving people a chance, but when you're at the parliament level, you do want people who uh, either are like, you know, exceptional to, exception to the rule where you can't catch them on anything without them responding back with completely intellectual, intelligent, and well-informed Oh, no, no, you're wrong because this statute states this, 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 and they know everything about everything. You do get people like that from time to time. If they're into it, they're into it. But if you just put them there because they're a minority and a female, and that was the number one qualification, well, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> you know, that's as qualified as you're going to get, and we're seeing it. So the Trudeau government is, is, is pretty much going to be as dysfunctional in three years to four years. I wonder how many of them are just going to quit. Because, again, you're putting people in over the head when they're not ready to be there. And that makes them feel bad about themselves, makes them feel bad about their competency level. And then, of course, it's just bitter resentment and all this negative stuff that comes out of it. Rather than say, you know, we don't care who you are or what you are. Here's the criteria. Meet it. Meet it. Meet the criteria. I never beat anybody up with a sucker before. But this vexes me so. I would be, re I would be willing to do this. So, so demographic change, that's what they want. Uh, progressive agenda, jobs leaving Canada. Uh, so all the job, the jobs that have been created by the Trudeau government have been created in other country, every country but Canada. <laughs> and for the people that, especially the, I mean, we're in October or November. Sorry, uh, the economic downturn of the year is always October. You get a little bit of a pick me up through Christmas to slingshot you through to February, but we're not even seeing that. We're not seeing that pickup of mass hiring for Christmas. The money, people just don't have the money to spend. Why? You drive your wages to the bottom, drive your currency to the bottom. If you drive your currency to the bottom, you'll get there. Buying the cheapest stuff for everyday lowest prices, the cheapest stuff from the lowest bidder, you'll get there. This idea that we've got to keep racing our currency to the bottom to, and giving our sovereignty away is ridiculous. We need a nationalistic government in Canada. The immigration system that I, I would propose is this. Right now, we're full. Go back to tap on, tap off. If we need people, bring them in and maybe in 20 years, Cut it off for at least 10, revise at 10 years. Do we need more people? Do we not? Uh, that type of thing. Foreign aid, cut that off first. The immigration system, number one, people who are paid by the government of Canada should not be getting $50,000 bonuses for getting immigrants into Canada and making them citizens. That is such a conflict of interest and so against the taxpayer. Yes, it's brought in by Crutcher. Again, liberal scam after liberal scam after liberal scam. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's horrible. So we need to reverse this. The only way you're going to get a reverse of this, you can't vote conservative, you can't vote NDP at all, uh, or you'll, you know, unless you like communism, because that's what the NDP is. The Green Party, is, is they're, they're not really an option. They, they don't really have any, really, they have nothing that would, they talk about sustainable development, they talk all the UN talking points, I get that, but they don't have a plan. The Liberals, the problem with the Liberals is, we're at scam, what, 57? And it's only been a, how many months? They're always, you know, like, and it's just the scabs that they're starting to catch on to now. And it's just one after another. Uh, how many did we have in 10 years under Harper? Well, we had a helicopter scandal with uh, one of the ministers taking two helicopter rides. We had Mike Duffy. Yes, he is an asshole. I've met the guy. I used to work security. You could say good morning to this guy 100 times in a row, and he won't even look at you. He's, he is that kind of an asshole. But technically, he didn't do anything illegal, although immoral, yes. Uh, but he was found not guilty, day in court. So that was the best scandals you can get. Scandal light almost anywhere. There might have been other things, but not, trust me, if the CBC would have got it, they would have ran with it. it would, you know, the, the, the Senate scandal was the best they could come up with, which really we got off, we got off light on that one. I'm not, I was never a Harper fan, but their government at least was more believable. But with the Trudeau, we're already talking about pay-to-play kind of thing, like what the Clintons are doing. Uh, they call it something a little different here in Canada, but same idea. Uh, all these lobbyist groups come in and are basically, they, you know, they go campaign there and, and, and they pay so much a plate. And it, it go, it's, it's a shady gray area of the rules that it is, you know, breaking the rules, but just enough that they can uh, avoid uh, 
avoid prosecution, right? So th th that's what the liberals do. That's what they've always done. Um, and yes, it will wreck the country. Now, after four years, we're going to have 1.2 more million people in this country. Oh, you just, we're going to get a big storm. The question is, do those people vote for the Trudeau government again? I don't know. It depends how fast they can make them citizens, right? Uh, unless they do like in the states where illegals can vote, which I think is ridiculous. But considering that the system that's trying to overthrow the United States is the, the system that we're right online with right now, same system that's in Europe. It's all the Rothschild, Rockefeller stuff, uh, you know, that type of thing. Soros, Kissinger, Brzezinski. It's the same group all the time. So that said, that's where we're at. So if you had a hard time finding a job now, next year you have 300,000 people more that you're going to have to compete with. Uh, if you're dying waiting for treatment in the hospital now, there's 300,000 more people that are going to be coming in. Are they going to contribute to the economy right away? Statistically speaking, probably most likely not. That's a big rumble out there. So I guess like anything, yeah, it's always calm before the storm, right? So <laughs> there we go. So I'll leave it at that. No, we need a national. It's, if there was a time, time is running short, but we need a nationalistic. It only takes 270 some odd signatures to become a political party in Canada. There is a nationalistic party in Canada. The problem with them is they're 21933 Germany. No, we need a Canada first party that just Canadian issues, never mind foreign policy and helping people over there and all that. No, turn it inward. Canada first. Again, why, do we, why are the Liberals uh, and the Bloc Québécois spending money over in Africa to promote uh, Francophonie? Like, I mean, it just makes no sense to take Canadian dollars and do that when we have an ailing health care. I mean, it'd be different if uh, everybody was being paid, you know, uh, 25 bucks an hour and we had like a 3% unemployment rate, whatever, and not a growing tens of thousands of people. All the jobs that have been gained in the last past since Trudeau has been taken has all been part-time jobs mostly. Very few full-time jobs. Uh, Alberta is not recovering. Uh, here in Quebec, uh, well, here in Quebec, the reason why people are so out of unemployed in Quebec is the, the PQ government. They, they put in things like uh, comp the competency thing to make everything unionized, these big unions that keep people from working. That, that's what they do. Otherwise, this province would take off like a rocket, and then there wouldn't be a claim for sovereignty. So, that's, that's, so it's being held back. But if you have a nation nationalistic government, they don't play that kind of BS, and what they would do is say, okay, well, We'll get rid of the regulations that hold things back, keep the environmental regulations that make things safe, get rid of mass immigration so that people can integrate. Again, it take the first generation doesn't integrate. They're, they don't speak English, whatever, or they speak a little bit of English. They, they make a go of it. Their children, they, they integrate a lot better. The, the, the third generation fully integrated, uh, that type of thing. So... That, 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 that's the statistics. That's what it is. So I know there's some people that, because they're leftists, that's why, no, 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 we have to have mass immigration and multiculturalism and stuff like that. But this is going to backfire. It has been backfiring. We see more of a backfire in Europe than we are here. We're about eight to ten years out from where Europe is now with their problems with mass immigration. You can't bring in millions of people per decade, let alone half a million people, a million people every two years, uh, or 1.2 million people every four years right now is what we're going to go up to. These quotas are too high. They don't allow time for people to integrate, which leads to culture clashes. Culture clashes lead to civil wars. Civil wars lead to genocide. Will it happen here in Canada? Well, if we keep going the way we are, in 25 years, we're going to have a civil war in Canada. Uh, Europe is three to five years out from civil wars. I mean, you can clearly, it's not going to be everywhere, no, but you're seeing the clashing starting now uh, because people just don't integrate. You can't grab people from all over the world, drop them in one spot and say, just because we're, you know, everybody's going to get the same opportunity and stuff like that. But look at the discrimination these equality type people have to do. They have to make sure that they put in laws that other people, like for example, uh, so be, uh, Bill C-25, I can't compete with. Why? I'm a white guy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, and I'm male. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it discriminates against me personally. Um, and there's some people, well, well, you should because you're privileged and you're this and that. This is another reason why people don't want mass immigration. What happens when you're on my list? You know what I mean? Like what happens when, when uh, you're in my group? Well, then you're going to have a dog in a fight. So yes, of course, I'm going to sit there and say, you know what? I don't want gender quotas. I don't want mass immigration. I don't want uh, globalization. I don't want that. And the nationalistic government will get that. So to start a nationalistic government, yes, I know I'd never be the head of it, uh, but I'd definitely like to be instrumental in starting one. I don't know how many people. I'd, I would need people in all 10 provinces and three territories to make this a go. Uh, and I would be willing to work on it. Obviously, like any party, it would need funding. Um, and I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Why? Because I love my country, and I really don't want to just see it turn into a third-world hellhole, which, I mean, again, the numbers are there. We're diving. 
uh, just like I said we would. Trudeau's plan wasn't a plan. It was a we think and we believe uh, feel-good plan, dupe the stupid liberals <laughs> that believe that he was actually going to do, be better for the economy. You can't spend your way out of debt. You can't eat more food than you grow. Two plus two will never make five. Nobody told Justin Trudeau this. John McClellan doesn't care about this. And George Soros, definitely, his good friend, his exact words, I'm quoting him, his good friend. If George Sor- if John McClellan's good friend is George Soros, then so it is. Uh, all these progressive agendas that you're seeing, this, this lunacy that you're seeing, that's where it's coming from. So if we don't want George Soros's of the world running our country from the United Nations and all that stuff, these billionaires, we need to have a nationalistic government that wrangles the stuff. So tell me what you guys think about the idea. Uh, again, I'll have to come up with a mission statement and stuff like that. I need to look at, because uh, the, the thing I'd like to do is look at the entire... Canadian budget. I did it a couple years ago, a couple years ago, about a decade ago, and I've seen how it all breaks down, where everything's spent, how much we're taking in, and how much we're not. We cut the foreign aid spending first. It means you're not cutting, you're not firing people here. But we need to surgically. Uh, right now, we need to chop government with an axe. I hate to see people out of work, but we need to chop government with an axe. But I know one big part of the budget is the 23 billion, which is probably going to increase. Uh, I don't know how it's all spent in the Immigration Act, but it's 23 billion a year. It's one of our biggest expenditures. Um, so that's a lot of free stuff coming into people to make that. It's not like years ago where people got here with their, you know, their little suitcase and had to find a place to go. And, you know, what, it's not like that anymore. Now you come in, you get loans, you get this, you get grants, you get all these things. Uh, that costs money. Again, you don't mind some sensible immigration, but right now we, we, we don't really need any more immigration. We don't have the job markets for it. We don't have the healthcare system to sustain it. We don't have the retirement to sustain it. And yes, by cutting some of the $23 billion, again, I have to look at how much the, uh, the pensions cost. But if health care and pensions, I think health care is the number one. Pensions might be number two. Immigration is, I don't know how far down the list it is, but it's pretty close to the top of the list of what you know, the Canadian taxpayer has to deal with. On top of carbon taxes coming in, on top of other taxes coming in. Uh, it's, it's amazing the amount of taxes coming in right now. Uh, you know, oh yeah, but we've helped the uh, the child benefit tax or whatever. Yeah, but you're taxing everybody else. Ridiculous. Oh yeah, but we tax the one percent. No, you're not. You're taxing everybody. <laughs> the pros won't just tax the one percent. Like John McClellan said a few years ago, that's where we'd like to start. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, they are progressive because they started there. Now they're way down to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you. So my take on it: they get out of this mess. Uh, one group's uh, the liberals and conservatives are not options anymore. The other two are not even a chance of an option. We need a nationalistic government. We need it now. We need it for the next election. Could it happen? I think if there was a proper organization, yes. And uh, I wouldn't mind being a founder of the blueprint of it. Uh, but I do know that my level of expertise is going to be here. I need people up here. I need people who know the system the best. But the people who can uh, kind of come in and say, okay, we know what the loopholes and we know what they're going to throw at you. Because there's a lot of stuff, like, I mean, you have to understand, we have way too many laws in Canada, way too many. So you want to bring out a bill? Oh, you can't because there's this law that you have to change. You have to change 172 laws to be able to change one law. That's the things that you have to watch out for. That's why you need, you're going to need a certain amount of lawyers. The populism thing, sure, I can play the populism thing because that's basically I'm a part of the populist. But what I'm talking about is real people who really want the best for Canada, best for Canadians, putting Canada first, not the minority first, but majority rule. So I'll work on a basically a uh, mission statement because uh, it's something I'd like to do anyway. I mean, I'd like to be prime minister of the country by the time I'm 50. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, you know, just you know, theory, you know, in my delusional world that I'm in, uh, that type of thing. But that said, uh, I think if you promote and offer a complete platform that has nothing to do with the liberals and the conservatives whatsoever. I'm not saying everything they have is bad. I'm saying the majority of the stuff they have is bad. And one party is really not much different than the other. And if you come up with the, the person that offers the counter on mass immigration, the counter to uh, CETA, SOPA, PIPA, the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, NAFTA, and puts Canadians first, uh, people that, you know, basically, whoever offers this counter to these crazy liberals and, and, and conservatives, that run the country. 
I think that party will just skyrocket very quickly. It's time for a nationalist party in Canada. There's no doubt about that. So anyway, uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation to the channel. Links down below. Thank you so much to everybody who has. Next that, rate, subscribe, share, comment. Like, be, tr uh, be true to yourself, be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. And have yourselves a great day. Good day, hi, and welcome. All right. So, just a little bit of an update on here in Canada. Something I was talking about uh, a little while back about Trudeau... Uh, opening up the mass immigration to half a million a year, 500,000. Last year we brought in about 300,000 up from our quarter million a year of 250,000. But it looks like they're not going to be able to do the full uh, 500,000 uh, because they don't have enough immigration officers to process all those people, uh, which I do see a lot of problems coming out of this. Uh, so they're going to only up it to 300,000. But according to John McClellan, they're going to increase this every year. <coughs> you know, every year it's going to increase by more and more and more. So... There's a couple of questions that people have to ask, uh, you know, wherever your biases lie on this, this issue. For me, it, it is an issue. Uh, immigration, I think, is a huge issue uh, because of where it leads to in the long run. Now, if you're just one of those uh, multiculturalists, stuff like that, there's really not, you're not going to get much out of this video. But if you're, some per if you're a person that worry about demographics of Canada, uh, job opportunities and stuff like that, well, what does it mean for you? And strain on the, the, the system, that type of thing, like health care, retirement, etc., etc. Well, here's what it's going to mean. Um, basically, they're going to increase uh, economic workers by 7%. Now, that sounds good, but the problem is you have to factor in what does economic worker mean. It means that 7% of the people coming in are going to be coming in for job skills. What jobs are these? Well, these are jobs that uh, they're talking about some high-tech people coming in, which has a lot of problems there. Every, uh, keep it simple. When you take a doctor out of the third world, and bring them here. It might be a win for us, but those third world countries don't have a lot of doctors to begin with. So even though we're a bit short on the doctors here, we can manage. But when you pull them out of there, guess what? That you know that you know they 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 have nothing now. So you you create a brain drain there. This is a typical liberal thing. They've done this with every immigration system they've ever had. Uh, the next one is now there is an extra person competing for the job you want. Uh, I do believe what they're going to do is temporary foreign labor uh, quite a bit uh, because I think the policy is still the same where they can pay uh, foreigners 15% less, which I don't agree with at all, to undercut the labor here, which means you're going to have more job scarce, uh, rarity, job scarcity, so, uh, so to speak, competing with more people who can outbid you, so to speak, uh, just by the fact that they, they, the employers are able to undercut their labor. So that said... <laughs> and even if you wanted to say, okay, well, I'll take the less pay so I can get the job. By law, they can't do it. Why? Because as a Canadian citizen, in areas where there's minimum wage, they have to, by law, pay, pay you minimum wage. So you can't get the job even if you were willing to go the other way. So <laughs> that type of thing. So it's a lose-lose situation. Do we need the, these immigrants? My theory is no. I mean, we don't have a growing enough economy for this. Uh, to bring in the people at the rate we're bringing them in is too fast. I do believe we're going to have a culture clash eight to ten years out, like we're seeing in Europe now. Uh, a little bit after that, it's going to get pretty rough. The problem is, is you can't just grab people from all over the world, throw them into one spot, and expect them just to integrate. It takes a couple of generations to do this. We used to have tap-on, tap-off immigration system. About 40 years ago under Trudeau, they basically, uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, they went with this idea that Canada has no identity, uh, it's just a multicultural thing, uh, there's no... You know, what is a Canadian? I mean, for some reason, these guys couldn't look at the uh, coat of arms to figure out what our heritage and lineage was, but uh, I digress from there. Uh, so what they're saying is that Canada doesn't have an identity. Anybody that steps foot here is a Canadian. Uh, Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian, which is the way their, their approach to it. Whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's up to you. I don't necessarily agree with that. I do believe this country has a whole lot of heritage, uh, and the identity, I think, is pretty... You know, we're a British colony a French, uh, French colony, uh, natives, you know, <laughs> basically a shield of arms, you got British, Scottish, Irish, French, and natives. That's the main core of the value system that turned Canada into what it is. Uh, and then it got rearranged about 40 years ago. So we were doing good up until that point, and we had tap on, tap off immigration. If we needed people, we brought them in. We didn't need them, we, we shut it off. So you bring in people for about a decade, and then you let a generation or two to integrate, usually by the third generation you have a full integration in, into the society, but we're not doing that now. Now it's just flood them in beyond saturation levels, which doesn't allow people to uh, basically integrate. What ends up happening is you get ghettos, you get uh, these little subcultures everywhere.
got to start making demands. We're seeing it already. Uh, I don't want to divert to too many different topics, uh, but we're seeing it already in Canada. We see it more in Europe than we do in Canada, and we're doing exactly all the crazy stuff they're doing. So economically, it doesn't make sense to bring in any more people. We really do need to cut the immigration off in Canada for a couple of de a generation at least. Uh, we've got enough people here. Yes, Canada is a large landmass. We don't have the infrastructure. Every immigrant you bring in, you have to understand that uh, the lawyers and, and uh, you know this this started with John Kretsche. All these uh, immigration firms, every time they get a Canadian Can uh, a Canadian citizen, they get a bonus of fifty thousand dollars for this. Is what I heard. So. <clears throat> Again, which that money, where does it come from? It comes from the taxpayer. That could be going to your health care, your retirement, all that stuff. Now, when they make the argument that, oh, no, well, we have to bring in all these immigrants because we have an aging population and a shrinking dem demographic, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, what they don't tell you is that the, the people that are coming in, because they're going to be underemployed uh, by paying them less for most of the time, and many of these people are not going to work anyway, uh, they're going to be on welfare, they're going to be on that, 